Gary, I'm Ariana. Nice hey. to meet you. Hey, Ariana. Nice to meet you as well. It's always nice to meet the person who has my jaw drop for like 10 weeks. It's <laughs> so, so many questions. So when you first became the showrunner for Force, you replied to a comment on social media that was like, bring back the OG power. And you did a fire emoji and said, bring it. What did that mean for you in season two? And how do you think we saw that? Ooh, good question. And I love your eyeballs. You're like right in on it. You see everything, huh? <laughs> yes. um, for me, I felt like season one, um, if I'm being completely honest, didn't deliver on who Tommy is, what he's like. And it, it didn't really do that for me. And honestly, when they came to me and asked me if I, I wanted to do season two, I thought, well, we need to give them more, the audience, because I'm very aware of wanting to deliver to the audience what they want, right? And giving them what they want in unexpected ways. And so when I went in, it just came very naturally to me because I was on power since season two. And I, I wrote a lot of the Tommy stuff and directed Tommy episodes that I was like, let's get back to basics. Let's get back to who Tommy is, what he wants, what makes him drive and like get into it. And like, there's a recipe for an episode of power, which is like crime, drugs, sex, aspiration, um, humor, and heart, right? Family. That That's like a good recipe. Put that in and you got a nice power stew, right? Mm -hmm. And I felt like a season one didn't have that. And it didn't even have his voice uh, really clearly in, in my head. So when I got to, to do it, I was like, okay, here we know. We need to like figure out what works. And it, as you noticed, probably in, in season two, my job as the showrunner was to go like, okay, I need to get rid of the stuff that I don't think our power audience craves. Like, I don't think our power audience craved Dahlia and was interested in the Dahlia, which was a made up drug. I was like, okay, that needs to go. And then, you know, so I, I, I got rid of that problem right in the first episode of the season. And there were other things that I knew that weren't servicing the world. And I, I, as soon as I started writing Tommy and I wrote the words, Tommy's back, it started flowing. And so, and I also knew that, you know, Joseph, the actor can do anything. And Joseph is from Chicago. And so before I took the job, I sat down with him and I said, you know, I want to really use Chicago as a character in this show. And so did Joe. And so Joseph and I sat and talked a lot about Chicago and about the streets and where we would film and what it would look like. And if you notice, there's a big difference between season one and season two is that we made it much more gritty. We made it more street. We made it, you know, it was the, the first season was a little high end glossy, but it felt fake. And so I just like brought it all down to like Sydney Lamette, Cinema Verite, street gritty. And also to, to expose, to, to use Tommy's best tools. And I knew that for me, in order to move the power story and the Tommy story forward, that what's next, what's Tommy's next step in evolution as a character? He would want to be the connect. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, let me give him that goal. And then let me throw every obstacle in the way in front of him to achieve that goal. And I'll get Tommy out of that. Uh, Tommy will reveal himself to me. And I think that's what we did. I appreciate your candor first off, and I definitely noticed all of the changes because as you were saying Chicago was a character, I felt like you, um, a lot of it was in location and it wasn't just, let's say, in the soundstage. And the locations that they met was way more realistic. Like I remember in season one, they meet to have a conversation next to Millennium Park. And I'm like, you don't yeah. like, where would you park? Like, this, this would be the worst place to have a conversation. <laughs> I lived in Chicago for a couple of years. So I'm like, literally, that wouldn't make any sense. The parking would make this conversation just irrelevant at this point because you'd be so angry. Exactly. But was that part of the reason to kind of dismantle the Flynn empire? And because yes. it wasn't serving? Like, what was the kind of the decision behind that? Yeah, you know, at first, when I don't know, and I'd love to hear your opinion as a viewer, and obviously as a fan and someone who's clearly schooled in power, is that when I watched the first season, the Flynn Empire didn't feel of the power world to me. It, it felt, it felt, it felt separate. It felt like it was in its own show. It could have been its own show, its own thing, but it didn't feel grounded, like for me. And so I felt like we needed to 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 go at it. We need to tear it up, make it messy, make it power. What was my version of the Flynn family? And, and so I sort of used, um, uh, uh, there's a Shakespearean, is, uh, I'm trying to think of a King Lear. 
It was the idea that Walter was King Lear and his children wanted his empire. That's what I went for. That was my inspiration for season two. But what's the street version of that, right? And so that's what I tried to do. Uh, but I knew it had to be dismantled. I knew that it, as it as it was in season one, it didn't fit into the power world. Yeah, I frankly agree. It, it didn't make sense. And at first I was like, maybe it's just because there's too many characters. But then when you brought in Mar Miguel's cartel, it made sense because they were at odds and they were working in the same fashion. So it wasn't like, oh, there's these, extra people that don't really make any sense oh you're good you're good first of all <laughs> i want to just tell you how savvy what a savvy viewer you are because i agree with you 1000 percent, and i would say our writers room would agree with you 1000 percent as well so you're right on oh thank you why did you guys decide to bring back holly for a second this season because it seems as if he was a bit more connected to larkisha and he killed holly yeah, you know what? It felt like that was the original sin. It was the first time as a viewer, you know, that we had seen Tommy in love, with, which was Holly. Mm -hmm. And so we thought if he's going to move forward in this love with Maria, we probably want to revisit the original love, right? And so but we talked about it a lot, though. You know, it could have been Lakeisha, um, but we did it, honestly, Holly, because it felt like that was the original sin. It was the love that he had um, corrupted, if you will. And he killed her, as you say. Yeah. Even for me, I feel like it was my quote unquote original sin as a viewer because she was the first person. And I realized this is how I watch power differently from other shows that I'm like, she has to go. And in real life, I'm not like this callous person of, oh, I don't like this person. <laughs> they got to be murdered. But like that's how and she was the first. And that's how I kind of viewed the show. It's like, oh. So and so has to go. <laughs> um, I like so, that. Oh, thank you. So, Tommy and him attempting to kind of have a family hasn't worked out. And there's so many people in this family. We see in the season finale, Kate almost ODing, and his reaction is kind of to just stare. Did he actually kind of purposely try to kill her because he gave her the drugs? Yeah, yeah, you're very good. You're again, you're a very savvy viewer. Yes, that was our intention as the writers in the room is that we wanted him to walk in and after having all this trouble with her, having the trouble with DMAC, you know, having the, the rupture with with uh, Anthony Fleming, his brother, um, you know, we wanted to explore the idea of would it be better if she were gone? And so it's the moment where she says her, her, her his name, she's on the floor and she says his name. And he stands there and it's a moment of like, do I just, let, would it be better? Would life be better without her? And that's a powerful thing, obviously, to think matricide. And that have, that'll that have repercussions. If we get the season three that I'm hoping for, that will have repercussions and play out in an interesting way. Um, but yes, and I think that's what's cool about that or interesting to me as a character for Tommy is that he'll have many different feelings about that moment. Why didn't I act faster? Or, you know, should I like let it just go? Should I, you know, he has like when he goes to the hospital towards the end of 10 and he wants to see her and, and his brother stops him there. You can see that his choice of just standing there is already weighing on him. But family is very, very, very important to Tommy. Um, and he will come around to that again. Yes. Um, to ask a very frank question. Why is DMAC just so dumb? Like, he has so many chances. Like, he's already been shot. He's killed a cop. He's done all these things. He's 16, and he really, really, really wants to be in CBI, and he thinks the streets in his life. He says such a callous and mean thing to his dad. Why yes. do you think that relationship seems irreparable, and why does he want to be in this life so bad? That's such a great question, and I love that you asked it. And again, um, our room talked about this so much, and Lucian wrote me this beautiful letter at the beginning of our season when I sat down with all the actors to tell them about where I thought their stories were going. He wrote me this beautiful letter of what it was like to be a young Black man on the streets of Chicago, the real of it, you know, me being a white man and not having that knowledge. And he wrote me this beautiful, you know, it was very emotional and really powerful to me, but I tried to use as much of that letter in the storyline for for um, his character, DMAC, this season. Um, and 
you know, a lot of people see the streets as their only way out, you know, or their only way of getting better, even though he's a smart kid, right? He could do better. There's an incredible draw. And I will share with you that my own brother, Jim, was, uh, we lost our parents when we were very young. When I was like 13, he was 17 and my other brother was 20. And my brother had an eighth grade education and he never looked back. He, the streets was where he felt most at home. I remember when he went to prison, he said to me, I'm happier in prison than I am on the street because I know where I'm going to sleep. Oh, wow. Um, it's you, life, you know, that's how I, and Lucian for me is he has everything, right? He has a father really who loves him, who may have not been for them when he was there. You know, Kate wants to have a you know, second chance with having a relationship with him. But what he thinks will make him happy is to be the man in the street, to get respect. And he's willing to sacrifice everything else in order to do that. And so being 16 plays a lot into the dumb part of it, but he's a kid who, who's a street kid in his heart. He just is. Yes. Um, and what, what you can share, um, what would you love to explore in season three? Oh, wow. In season three, to me, I would say that um, I would love to explore. There's like, it's almost like an exploration of the American dream. Uh, and that's really interesting for our show is the idea is what, because I feel all of us, okay, think of Lucian's character and think of me and think of yourself and then ask the same question of all of us, which is what will you do for uh, to get a piece of the elusive American pie that we've been told about? And the answer to the question of what will you do to get a piece of the elusive American pie, the truth is lie, cheat, steal, love, betray, and even kill. That's for different people. Now, I would say that I'm interested in exploring if we get a season three of what are you, each character I'm asking, what are they willing to do in order to get it? What will they do to keep it? What will they do when they lose it? And what will they do to get it back? The elusive it will be different for every character, but we're gonna see what someone will do in order to get what they want. And that's an exciting season of stories. Yeah, I'm going to call stars now. They're not going to answer my phone call and I don't have their number, but we have to get a season three, obviously. <laughs> but I really appreciate you talking to me. I can't wait to talk to you about season three and future projects. Ariana, you're so um, engaging and so smart um, of, of asking all the right questions for the show. So thank you for your like real viewership of, like, of, of being so dialed in. That, I really appreciate it. You don't even know. And I appreciate your vulnerability as well. Thanks. You have a great one. Okay. Bye.